These here are my Infinity RS3As. I actually have four of them. I'm in the process of doing some repairs. Some long, long needed repairs. Now the one on the left I've had for about 30 years and I've actually put in new grills on them and done some other things but there's work that needs to be done with these guys. Now these I've had for about I don't know maybe 15 years and they also need some work. So what we have planned here is on my newer set so to speak I need to replace this. Now I've done that already on these which has worked out real nice. I also need to replace all the ribbons and the tweeters and I'm sure the first thing you're thinking is where did you get those? A uh, gentleman has them on eBay right now but he says that he has thousands so they should be available for anybody who is looking for Emmett tweeters ribbons. Okay, besides having to move them like furniture because they're almost four feet tall and probably weigh 50 60 pounds each one of the major issues with infinities are these pots on the back i've never seen an infinity that actually has them intact now a lot of people jump them a lot of people um get them set just right you know and they work and they just kind of leave them that way mine have never worked i mean you can hear how smooth that one is. Now listen to this one. And that's a good one. I mean, I have them where you can actually feel the pieces are broken inside. And they should work. And I mine don't, so I'm replacing them. And I got to say, first off, that I'm not very good at soldering. And I know very little about electronics, but there's a lot of websites online that will help you out. Believe it or not, when I first got on the internet, you'd put in an Infinity speaker and people wouldn't have a clue. They'd end up coming up as a car. Today, there's lots of diagrams. There's lots of people who will give you a hand, you know. And if you can find the right pots, which, as I said, in this case, I will put the links below. But we have a 25-watt, 5-ohm pot here. I believe this is a 5 watt uh, 4 ohm I guess I, I, now I'm not sure I'll put the links in the description below as I said the way you begin Infinity and their genius wisdom decided to put the whole crossover on this board right here so you don't have to take the speaker apart at all you just got to take out uh, 6, 8 screws there and the whole thing comes right out and the crossover is on the back side but it's a lot of screws to take out, so you're going to have to hold on a second. Now the gasket may stick a little bit around the edge here, and you may have to put like a putty knife or something in there just to give it a little bit. And all it has to do is break loose because it's actually a foam. It's not made of an adhesive or something like that. And as you can see, I've already been well into this. I have already done those two over there at least the internals and just so you know from my experience between these two sets which were only made probably within a year and a half of each other the crossovers are different I and mean, they really are different like in this one here I need to put this pot in and it has to go in here which means I have to move this here in my second set of infinities, you can see there's been some changes. These are different. Their coils are now missing. They're just actually coils on the mounted to the actual board itself. This is different. That's different. And everything's pushed over. And as you can see, mine's actually been jumped. And this wire here is actually supposed to be connected right to here. And it's actually right to the lead. And uh same with the small tweeter pot over here. You can see this blue wire right here is actually supposed to be connected to this blue wire here. And it's crimped on to the end of the wire there. That has to go away. We're going to do away with all that. We're going to replace these two pots. And it's probably going to take me a long time to figure out my soldering abilities kind of really suck bad. But as long as I can get them in there, um, I'll be totally happy. 
I'm going to take this guy out and this guy out and uh, get them replaced. We have our pot out, and as you can see, it's not very complicated. And a lot of people have good results with cleaning these. They actually take them all out like they were going to replace them. But there's a couple online suggestions on actually how to clean the contacts inside so they work real well again. In my case, as in with this one, the first time I turned it, pieces fell out of it so cleaning was not an option now with my replacement pot as you can see it's a bit larger and with that comes a little bit of complication in this case I actually have to take plastic and lay it across the back because of all the cotton that's inside it'll actually get trapped between this. I've never seen one that's like this, but this is the one that was available. So it got bought and they're not cheap either. So we just have to lay a piece of plastic across here like it because it's down in here. But as it sits down in here brings up another issue. And it's only with this set, but with these three over here changed, this capacitor also was changed to one of these round ones. The pot doesn't sit in here it sits on the side of this and it's just barely but I caution you about prying these guys up because the last one I did actually right here where the wire goes in it broke off perfectly clean and now I'm on the hunt for another capacitor I rebuild boats and houses and stuff like that so this is all kind of new to me and I'm gonna to have to do some research to try to find one so I'm trying really hard not to break any wires off of this one or any of the other capacitors. Even though the capacitors, most of them, look like they would be easy to find because they got very nice numbers on it. That's a Texas instrument number. And it doesn't really correspond with anything that's current. So that's my scenario. Um, so I need to pry this guy up and I'm going to have to take this drill bit and just by hand go around and just kind of widen this up just a tiny bit so the neck of the pot actually fits into the hole and when I get that done it'll be time for some more horrible soldering
Okay, we finally have our two pots installed for our mid-range and our tweeters. Um, this one's a little short, but nothing makes contact, so we're all good. And I'm sure you see me use a little Gorilla Glue. I like the way, see this one over here? See how that's starting to foam a little bit? Even with this one, I had to actually put a piece of cork underneath of it. It's all about vibration. you got to remember that the actual woofers are right behind this. And pretty much all it is is this cotton here between the two. Alright, all that time later, we've got our two pots removed and replaced. And we have these stems that stick out. And sadly, the old knobs are just too small. And they don't fit right and they spin. So, And the ones that came with one of these is entirely too large. So I think I'm just going to leave the post. I mean, why not? I'm happy they're just there and nobody should be back here tweaking with it anyway. I'll put a mark on a post or something like that, you know, with a Sharpie. That way I know exactly where I'm at so I can set all four speakers that way. But now it's time to go off to the next one. All right, before I go disassembling anything, I just had to show this, is a, this set is a higher serial number. I would think that it would be a newer set. And as you can see, a lot of changes have been made. I mean, look how small these guys are over here. Those things were like beer cans or like coils on an old car. As I said, I know jack crap about this stuff. So I'm just a backyarder trying to do this. There's no reason to move that one giant capacitor over here that I broke into one in this set because this is over here. And it's out of the way. It just makes it an easier set. So just be aware that there are differences even within the own set. I mean, if you think, oh, I've got a set of RS-3As and that's what they are, no, it may not be. I've read a lot of stories where people have gone in and recapped everything and come to find out it didn't sound the same. And it's because, you know, just minor changes changes the tones of what they were trying to achieve in here. I mean, it's a, it was a symphony of, of, of capacitors and such to make a certain sound. And once you change something in here, it's going to change the sound. It may not even be, you know, only thing a dog can hear, but, you know, it's going to change a little bit here or there, unless you can find exactly the same thing. And that's why I'm looking for exactly the same thing. Even if i got to buy vintage, I'd rather buy vintage than actually try to replace it with something new and different. We're going to go ahead and take care of this one. Then we're also going to do a little face work to two of the speakers. And then maybe, hopefully, we'll be able to get some grill cover material and we're going to, go, we're going to re grill these guys. Okay, with the internal done, we need to work on the external. And a couple things I need to do is replace the ribbons in these tweeters. I'm replacing all four just because I have them and they're brand new and I want to see what they're like right out of the box and another thing I need to do is replace this foam because it is totally just crumbling under my fingers I mean but I have a trick for that I did many years ago on these and it cost about three bucks first thing we need to do is to take it apart in most cases you'll have Phillips head screws in our case we have these hex screws Next thing I do is I stuff some paper towels down here because you know this stuff is going to fall into the holes. So why not just cover it up now and get it covered up and stay that way. Then it's up to you on how to get it off. I personally use a scraper, a little goof off, dab it on. After I scrape all the stuff off I'll dab it on. And then I'll continue to scrape the glue off. You got to get it as flat as possible because when we replace it with this mat, 
that mat's only that thick and if there's any bumps and bubbles in there you will actually see it through there so here we go Okay, we're just checking our width and our length here of our new face plate. Don't stick it to the magnet of the speaker. And that should be fine, just in case we got a little extra. Um, we always add about a quarter inch to our uh, Createology here uh, foam sheet. Just to make sure, because we know the edges are going to be just a tad bit. And a quarter inch overall isn't going to make a big difference. But we need to cut it down a little bit and to make the corners we're just going to put a little glass there, a little beer glass right in each one and trim right around it and then we'll get it all centered up and glue it up. Alright we cut our piece out here and what we did is we actually got it all centered up perfect and we took a couple pieces of tape and marked exactly where we wanted to go and then we masked everything else off so we can use a little spray tack here and uh, coat both sides and that way we'll have after we pull most of the masking off there'll still be two final pieces of tape down here that'll show exactly square where I want it to go Don't be surprised when you spray it with spray tack, it curls up. You just uncurl it a little bit and it'll lay flat. And then it flattens itself out as it dries. Alright, we let our glue set up. We removed all our masking except for our original tape, which will mark where the actual piece goes. As I said, this piece actually flattened out like it did. And now we just have to. With some help online, we went ahead and ordered new caps for the broken one down here. And as you can see, our lead is broken right off. So, and there's really no fixing this. So we ordered these, which they are slightly different. So we went ahead and replaced both in this set to keep them matched in case the set is ever actually separated. And we replaced our plastic. We had a roll of this like speaker fabric. It's stuff they stuff in there. And we figured it would breathe a lot better. So we went ahead and we used that instead over top of our open pot there. So it doesn't catch any of this fiber. 
Hey YouTubers. Should I use YouTubers? Hey humans that are watching this video. <laughs> Order!